Hi, welcome everyone. Welcome to today's Spotlight session. Uh, let me introduce myself. Uh, I'm Jem. I will be your GMAT Club moderator for today. So I know you guys have been doing this for the past two weeks. We are now on our third week, second day actually. And we have a great set ready for you today. We will start off with Darden School of Business, followed by McCombs School of Business, then UNC Keegan Flagler Business School. So um, before I hand it over to Katie, um, I have a few things to mention. First, and I know you've been hearing this a lot as well, um, do like and subscribe to GMAC Club. Like this video if you like it. Um, if you don't, give us feedback so that we can improve it further. And please don't forget to subscribe to GMAC Club. Now, um, without further ado, let's get right to it. Um, we have here today Katie from, from Darden. And um, we also have in the chat box, uh, Catherine, and she will be answering your questions. So let's keep this session very engaging and pose your questions if you have um, questions in the chat box and we will answer them after the presentation or Catherine will want to answer them during the presentation. So let me hand it over to you, Katie. Thanks, Jim. I'm excited to be here. Hey, everyone. My name is Katie Yielding. I'm Director of Admissions at the Darden School of Business at the University of Virginia. We are located in Charlottesville, Virginia. So thanks so much to all of you for joining us from all around the world today, wherever you may be calling from or watching later. So looking forward to sharing a little bit more about Darden. Like Jim said, we're gonna start by sharing more about Darden and talking through some of what makes the program unique and giving you a little context for, for what the program looks like. Then we'll open it up to your questions. So I hope you keep those questions coming in the chat box throughout the entire time and know that we'll have the opportunity to address some of them directly on air here in the second half of our time together. So looking forward to that. Um, like the presentation says, Darden is all about preparing future leaders. So um, that's kind of what we're going to focus on today as we, we share more about the program. We'll go to the next slide. So a little bit about Darden. These are the three areas we're, we're going to talk about today. So we're going to talk about the educational experience. That's the reason you're coming to business school, right? To, to learn more. So you want to know what that learning is going to look like and feel like and have an idea of, of what to expect there. We're also going to cover all the different career opportunities and support that you're going to receive because that's the other goal to accelerate your, your career and, and continue that momentum. And third, we're going to share more about our community at the school, what to expect, who are going to be your peers, what that network will feel like both during your time at school and for all of your time as an alum of, of the program too. So uh, that's where we're going today and looking forward to, to digging in more. We'll also cover some admissions related material as we go along. If you have questions, feel free to put those in the chat if they're more specific to, to applying to the program. Okay, so some of you who have started to, to learn more about Darden may know that we are a case method program. What does that mean? Uh, it means that everything we do is in the context of real business scenarios. So you are learning from the, the real world. You are gonna learn about um, the different problems that have happened, how leaders have managed through them, and potential ways that you are going to find solutions in your future using those as examples. So day in, day out, you're getting to really dig into the material, work with your classmates to solve these business problems or to analyze them in greater detail. Sometimes there is no resolution. That's part of the lesson too. So um, as you learn about case method, I think it is important to, to maybe recognize that this is a different type of learning than you may have experienced experienced in past academic programs. Many of us spend secondary or undergraduate education or sometimes other graduate programs doing a lot more listening than talking, where you're going to be more in that lecture style room. 
a Darden that's flipped on its head. Uh, case method room is, is engaging by its very nature. It requires and expects that all students are going to be sharing their perspective and asking each other questions. And the faculty member is really there to facilitate that conversation, to help bring out the strengths and the knowledge of everybody in the room around you. So it's really important to bring that personal point of view, bring that past work experience and life experience to the table, because that's what's going to add a richness to a case method conversation. You don't walk into you know, a business meeting at work completely uh, unprepared or dry, and you don't do the same in a case method classroom. You have context. You've done some, some work beforehand. And, and, and those faculty are there to get excited to teach you in this manner, too. So I think that it is one of the hallmarks of, of the Darden program. So in terms of tempo, what that looks like, all of our students are in a core curriculum together throughout the majority of the first year. We're on a quarter system. So the first three out of four quarters, our students are taking a set of 10 core business classes all together. And they lockstep. What happens in one may connect what happens into one and another class later on. And sometimes they're even jointly taught. So there, there's a real momentum that builds over the course of that core curriculum. You also are going to work in small teams to facilitate that learning. You're, they're called learning teams at Darden. So working with five or six students to look through those cases together, take a, a first pass at, at solving some of them, and then you go into class the next day ready to dig in more, ask more questions. So we have class on Mondays through Thursdays, three classes a day, three cases a day. So if you do some quick math, that means by about the end of October, early November, our students hit 100 cases. And by the time they graduate, they're edging up on about 500 cases. So that is a lot of material that they're learning not only um, about the actual subject matter, whether it's you know, global economics or marketing or communications, but they're also learning about specific industries, about specific problems points in time. So there's a real holistic uh, learning that happens within that case method education. We'll go to the next slide to, to keep digging in a little bit deeper here. So you think about you know, why does the case method matter? Why should I learn this ways? You hear some of the competencies that, that we consider as really important for learning outcomes. Educational research shows that you know, we learn better in context and that's, that's what's happening within case method, that you really have the opportunity to commit that to memory. So you, you can't come in with kind of a, a pre-prescribed pre answer or solution um, because, you know, what if the conversation starts going a different direction? You have to be willing to adjust, think on your feet, respond to what's happening in real time. Those are some of the skills that you're going to need as a future business leader too, to be adaptable to what's happening and you know how, how a conversation, how a situation may pivot. This gives you an opportunity to really flex that muscle, practice that skill a little bit more. And you have to make a decision. So at the end of each case, you know, the, the question is going to be, well, what would you do? At the beginning and the end, <laughs> that's going to be the question. You know, If you were in this situation, if you were the protagonist in this case, what would you do next? So you're having to say, okay, when I am that, that future business leader, when I'm the director of that organization, when, that, when I'm the you know, CMO, the CFO, the CEO of this organization, what would I do here? And so that gives you the real opportunity to practice because that's the goal. You want to be in those decision-making shoes in the future. So here you are getting to do that. Uh, and, you know, a lot of people, I think, can get nervous about the case method because they say, you know, I don't know that I'm really confident talking about this in front of the class, or I don't know, you know, the subject yet. That's part of the opportunity is you get to, to practice in kind of a safe environment where everybody is learning, everybody is, um, you know, skilling up in their their presentation skills too. So you're not only learning that material, but you're learning how to present it in a way that is going to be clear, concise, and convincing for your classmates as well. And that's going to help build your confidence as you step into that space in the future. And you always have to be thinking about, you know, what's the bigger picture here? It's not just about this one problem in this one narrow area. It's, you know, the wider scope too. So you know, you're, you're learning to see kind of the bigger perspective on, on any problem. 
Additionally, I think, you know, you also are really going to get to to foster more of that community uh, in in the Darden atmosphere, that you're not just one person coming in and sharing your perspective. You're helping to bring out the talents, the knowledge of your classmates as well. And that brings a lot of connection that happens. If you're sitting in a Darden classroom, it's about 65, 70 students in one of those core classes. And so you have to know how to speak up at a certain time, how to quiet down to let somebody else speak up. You know, that's that's a skill that takes practice. And in doing so, you're going to learn to really listen, to hear what your classmates have to say and to appreciate their point of view. And when that happens, you're going to then you know extend that relationship outside the classroom. You're going to walk out of class and say, hey, I'd love to hear more about what you thought today. I had never even considered that point or, oh, my gosh, I didn't know that's how you know that type of um, you know, business situation worked in Brazil or Israel or China or wherever that classmate of yours uh, may be from and the perspective they're sharing that day. And so you know, that that connection that happens within class, that appreciation for each other's um, knowledge and skill and point of view is going to extend outside the class too. And we'll continue to talk about that. But I think it's a real foundation of the Darden community is that uh, that trust that gets built up within those those case conversations in the classroom. Okay, we'll go next. Okay, so we'll we'll start in on career, and this is this is what you're here for, right? You want to continue to to elevate that career, open up more doors for you in the future, and we see time and again that our students continue to excel professionally, uh, given this foundation that they're developing within our, our case method classroom and this type of community environment. So uh, just to give you a little bit of a, a groundwork for what career support looks like at Darden, our students begin working with and connecting with our career advisors before they even arrive here. So it's mid, it's late June right now. It's about to say mid June, but we got one more day to go. And our students are already well underway in connecting with our career resources and have been for several months now. So, you know, as you're thinking about applying to business school and people say, you know, it's really important to have an idea of what you're interested in professionally or your career goals. You know, this is why it's because it starts even before you get to school is you're going to start um, you know, getting to, to work with resources in, in our program to help you plan out what what you're going to be doing next. And so that one on one advising begins even in the summer. Every student has an opportunity to connect with one of our career advisors. They're matched up based on their professional industry of interest and uh, are going to start kind of building out you know, a plan for, for you as an individual. So an idea of the types of industries you're interested in, the types of specific companies, come up with a networking plan and, and start thinking about how your specific background is going to um, facilitate you, you reaching your goals. You're also going to have the opportunity to um, work closely with, with second year students at Darden. We call them career coaches. They're kind of the second piece of that triangle of support, uh, where that's just going to be a student who's you know one year ahead of you in the process, who's there to, to guide you, help connect you to fellow classmates of theirs who may be also following a path of, that's similar to yours as well. And um, to, to help kind of coach you through, you know, those, uh, all those meetings that you're going to have with companies and with uh, all your interviews to come. So you're going to have that student support. And we also have a number of career clubs as well. So those would kind of be the third part of the triangle. Those career clubs, everything from, you know, the FinTech club to the data science club to consulting club, they're going to put on conferences, bring in speakers, host big mock interview days. They're going to help you keep you uh, abreast of what's going on within that field so that you're feeling really confident and ready when it comes time for recruiting too. And then you can't forget that we've got a lot of other resources available, including the huge alumni network. It's one of the strongest parts of the Darden experience and will continue to, to be a big part of your life after Darden. And our alums are always very eager to support our students as they're seeking internships and full-time opportunities. And then down the line as their careers continue to grow too. So really learning how to kind of best tap in and um, be a part of that network and it's not just all about numbers it's not just about how many alums you have but it's about how responsive those alums are how excited they are and this community in Darden really uh, doesn't end during the time as a student alums continue to be very passionate about supporting our students when they start in on their own recruiting path as well
We also, for our international students, we know that you may be you know, having additional questions about what's it like to recruit at a U.S. business school or what resources may be available, depending on what your career goals may be, either within or without, outside of the United States. And so know that we have not only these resources specific to your industries of interest, but also a team of people who can support you as an international student at Darden uh, in terms of your academic and career searches. So um, they're there to help you kind of understand what that work authorization process may look like, what companies may be um, you know, the best for you to target depending on your your area of interest and, and coach you through that from beginning to end. Um, and a lot of that does start even before you arrive at Darden. We have an entire international student orientation program prior to the start of the program to help students really get acclimated and excited and feel confident about making this transition to, to business school in the United States. So uh, we know that everybody's coming from a different place and building on a different foundation and our Career Center is really ready to, to meet you wherever you are, um, whether that's different geographies, different professional backgrounds. We know that you really want a tailored approach to, to your career support. We'll switch over to the next slide. Okay, this gives you a little bit of idea of, of some of our alums. We, we spent this slide focusing more on some of our alumni based all over Asia. And so it gives you an idea of some of the different roles they have, the, the breadth of industries where Darden alumni go. I think a lot of times people are asking, you know, what type of person comes to Darden? Uh, what, or what type of career are they looking for? And you think, it, like it said, you, know, you can really from anywhere to anywhere you can see that there are people who have chosen to build their careers in a variety of industries from um from venture capital to investment banking to luxury goods uh to technology to manufacturing there's opportunities for you to take your career in the direction that, that most interests you that's what it's all about and uh hopefully this is a, a good illustration of some of those opportunities that that you may have for yourself Okay, so it's it's not just Darden that, that thinks we can uh, take you to the place you want to go. Uh, I think you know some of these these rankings can always be confusing for uh, prospective students to analyze, and I think that it's it's good to be skeptical. But sometimes they're really helpful too to say, okay, there's outside organizations who who agree that this is a program that is going to be able to to support me, help me get where I want to go. And I think these are some of the categories that we're especially proud of that we think are really important. Um, we're the best public university, uh, best business school in, in the U.S. among our, our public peers. Um, also, the number one faculty. I think sometimes people underestimate how important that is going to be into the uh, in the experience that you're going to have in business school. You're going to want faculty who are there to partner with you in the classroom and outside the classroom to help support your your learning and your experience. And Darden, our faculty are are far from just your you know professor that you may have had in undergrad who, who gives you a lot of information and then may walk, walk out the door. Our faculty are known to be incredibly accessible. It's an open door policy. So our students can drop by their faculty offices anytime to ask follow up questions or maybe it's just career advice or just life chats that that's fully available to, to all of our students to build those relationships. And then you'll also see faculty at a lot of social events around Darden too. Uh, there, there's usually a faculty band going on at any in any given year or that you may see them out at some of those Darden Cup events, some of those fun athletic activities that we have going on as a school too. So there's always um, opportunities to build those relationships, both in the classroom, but also outside too. And I think that's where you know, the educational experience comes into play. People say, you know, what what is you know, the best educational experience? And I think it's holistic. It's not just, you know, those 90 minutes you sit in a classroom. It, it's much more than that. It's the depth of learning that happens in and around that, that time in the class and the opportunities that it provides for you to continue expanding your career. So I think this gives you an idea of, of some of the, the different organizations that are, are speaking to the, the value you and the, the depth of the learning experience you may have at Darden. Well, your time in business school is not just 
uh, at school alone. You want to know that you're moving somewhere that you're going to be excited about and where you really can continue to build that community and enjoy all that's uh, offered around it. Like I mentioned at the beginning, uh, UVA and Darden are located in Charlottesville, Virginia. We're right in the middle of the state of Virginia. It's about two hours south of Washington, D.C., and about one hour west of Richmond, Virginia, which is the capital of the state. And we're nestled right at the bottom of the Blue Ridge Mountains. So it's a really good mix of small city and a lot of outdoor opportunities. Um, that means that most of our students, 95 plus percent are moving from elsewhere, coming from all over the United States, all over the globe, moving to the city together. And so you know, there's a real opportunity to build that connection together and um, get to know each other in this new home for everybody and also to really enjoy that environment and, and not be distracted by maybe other things going on. So you really have the opportunity to, to enjoy this space. You can see this beautiful photograph, those Blue Ridge Mountains in the background, and that's the rotunda right in the middle. Uh, you may have seen that in other uh, you know publications before. It's actually a UNESCO World Heritage Site and is absolutely outstanding. The, the Dean of Darden, Scott Beardsley, actually lives on the lawn. So you can see his roof uh, in that picture there if you look closely. So it is a beautiful setting to, to live and to go to school. It's also really accessible. So we, you know, it's easy to get to any major city around the U.S. Uh, with ease. Our airport's very close by. We also have train that runs right through the city, so easy to use train for travel if that's your preferred method as well. And uh, if, you know, in terms of what you're looking at in terms of entertainment while you're in Charlottesville, it's a small city that packs a really big punch. So it's it's wine country uh, in, for the east coast of the United States. You know, being right off the hillside of the mountains, it's perfect wine growing region, which means a lot of vineyards, a lot of wineries, and there's a big culture around that. Um, I think it said on the last slide, it's you know, one of the top wedding destinations <laughs> on the East Coast too. So uh, a beautiful, beautiful location. And oftentimes a lot of our recruiters want to take advantage of that when they're coming to Charlottesville. They want to host events in beautiful places too. So oftentimes our recruiters are hosting um, events in, in some of these beautiful locations. And they're, and they're all just a few minutes from school. So you, within you know five or 10 minutes, you can be kind of at the closest winery if you want you know a casual Thursday, Friday, Saturday afternoon to, to hang out with your classmates, your friends, um, and enjoy the space. It's also a big foodie scene. There, I, there was a, a statistic a while ago, there was like more restaurants per capita than New York City. And I think that it sounds about right. When you walk around Charlottesville, there's food from all corners of the globe all over the place, and there's always new things popping up. So if you're somebody who likes to explore good cuisine, uh, we have a lot of it here. I've got, I've got some of my personal favorites. Uh, Lampo Pizza is one of my very favorites and Pasa Flora is my is my new favorite at the moment. So if you're looking for recommendations, the Dark Admissions team always has them coming your way. So let us know if you're coming to visit and want, want us to help out. And, and it's just, it's a wonderful community, wonderful place to live. It's the kind of place where you, you, know, you may bump into your neighbor or your classmate at the grocery store um, and then you know, be able to meet new people when you go out to a concert or another type of event around town that there's always an um, activity going on, but it's got that kind of small town charm of you know, being able to build connection with the broader community and also um, always explore new things. So as somebody who's lived here for well over a decade now, uh, it's in my, and now my chosen home. It's a place that I love a lot and I'm always excited to share with our students. And we often see our students coming back with a lot of frequency, whether it's getting to be on one of those recruiting teams at a, at a company in the future or always itching to come back for a reunion or other event here in the area. We'll go to the next slide. Okay, well, we're, we're getting closer to the end here. Wanted to save some time for your questions. So uh, I see Catherine's been over there in the chat tossing you some questions or tossing you some answers. So please keep our, the questions coming and we'll do our, our best to address them here in the, in the main room. I'll invite Jim back to, to join me for the second half of our conversation today. Thank you so much for that presentation.
Well, yeah, my pleasure. And thanks. Uh, the, our goal today was just to give you an overview for those of you who are just learning about Darden, have some foundational knowledge about the program, and hopefully that encourages you to go continue to do your research, learn a little bit more, explore some of our, our blogs, our podcasts, our other resources, um, and you know, reach out to people in the Darden community who are excited to, to share more about the program too. And then also we're, we're here to answer your questions. So we're getting a lot of theme in terms of the questions. Um, and so just summarizing all of them, uh, what is the trait that is being looked at for a good candidate or a good fit? Uh, and the questions are really coming from like how many years of experience at what, what's the average age, what industry there's, um, they're coming from and um, you know, the, like, the different factors. Yeah, great question. So I, we'll shift into to more admissions type of talk now. So um, yeah, for those of you who are applying, I'm sure Catherine is, is providing some of this information and links over on the chat side. But you know, I encourage you to check out our class profile um, and check out our employment report. I think those both give you an idea of you know, who's coming to Darden and then where are they going next. I think something that we really value about the Darden program is that we want and need students from a wide variety of backgrounds to facilitate that rich learning environment. So we're not a program that says we you know, want X number of consultants or X number of engineers, really want and need a, a lot of different backgrounds. I think sometimes students can also say, oh, maybe I'm kind of non-traditional. I'm coming from uh, you know, the military or I came from Teach for America or something a little different. And you know, we say, you know, the more the merrier that you know, that's really what kind of brings a, a lot of depth to the conversations is having that wide variety of backgrounds, whether it's kind of non-business majors or, you know, something, a, a professional role that you may consider a little less from business school kind of feeder type of, of uh, background, but really there's room for everybody and something that we want to see. In terms of traits, I think that is a great question. So, um, like we said at Darden, you know, it is so interactive in nature. And I think a trait we really look for is people that are going to be curious to learn, um, not just not only the material, but also learn from the people around them and who are going to be really engaged in the learning process, who are going to be good classmates, um, good team players, because it's all about learning together. You can't do anything in a silo at Darden. It's all about um, how to leverage the knowledge and the talents of the people around you to collectively build something better. And that that's really our kind of our foundational goal. And so, you know, in terms of traits, we want people who are excited about that environment, who are going to uh, work well with their classmates, who are going to continue to hone their their leadership and team skills with the people around them. And that are also going to be curious that they're not only going to be, you know, involved within their academics, but also outside the classroom. Something we haven't talked about yet, but you know, all the clubs, activity, leadership opportunities. We want to see people who are going to really dig in and take advantage of all the opportunities that Darden provides them. So in terms of you know, what that means in an application, you know, we look at to see you know, how have people demonstrated those things in the past through their current and past uh, professional roles, through their time in their undergraduate or graduate studies, um, through their outside of work involvements. You know, all of those things give us a little bit of insight into who you are as a person, how you like to spend your time, and what that may mean for the type of um, classmate you be, may be for, um, you know, our class at Darden too. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, that, makes yeah that makes sense. Um, um, like what, what, what type of conversations or what value you add in the conversation within the classroom and outside the classroom, right? So yeah, so yeah. that's great. That's great. And um, another question or another theme that I'm seeing is the post MBA career, right? Uh, a lot of people are asking about um, should they go in strategy consulting? Like, how are they going to pivot to that career? Or um, in finance also, and entrepreneurship and technology sector. Like, how many of the students are actually going into that after MBA? So maybe we could talk about that. Sure. So there is a really broad spread of where our students go after they graduate. So check that employment report. You'll get the exact you know, percentages there. Um, but our students go into a lot of different areas. And so really it's, it's a student's choice of you know, what is best for their background and their future interests. And then our goal is to help you know, facilitate making that happen. And, and, and so that, that's where our career center comes into play is, is helping coaching you towards what's, what's realistic, what's possible and what, you know, what's, 
are your goals. Um, so we do have a large number of students who go into kind of what you might consider like the bigger uh, categories of post MBA career, things like consulting and finance in particular and technology. Technology has been the fastest growing field for, for many years now, continues to be so. Uh, technology is also a pretty broad umbrella these days, can mean a lot of different things too. So I think that's exciting to know that that's a, a continual growth area for, for post MBA um, career options as well. But I think, you know, I, I encourage any applicant, anyone considering an MBA program, now's the time to really do your research on what you want in your career. Um, before you apply and you know as you're applying it's really important to be narrowing those interests down because i think as we talked about you know once you start in an mba program things can move really fast you're going to launch very quickly into the recruiting world sometimes even the summer before you get to your mba program and so having a, a, a definition of you know, what your goals are it doesn't mean you have to say i want this job at this company at this city i think it, it can it can look a lot different than that and, and maybe it should and that saying you know here are the skills that i have here are the things i'm really interested in and where i want to build further that could look like a career in maybe x or y and then here are some of sub areas that really interest me within that that's the type of research you should be doing now um, within your career exploration spending time um, reading as many resources as you can connecting with schools and and alumni networks that you may already have to kind of learn more about um, new career paths that that could be feasible and are exciting to you and and then start building out a pathway to get there and that's where a school can really meet you is you know once you're kind of you've identified the path that you want to take we want to help get you there people change their mind all the time and that's perfectly acceptable and and you should upon you know learning new information if you come to school you you know, get to to dig in learn to, about a totally new niche area that you didn't know existed or you get into an internship and you say oh my gosh i love this so much or maybe I actually don't, maybe I want to, you know, pivot and do something different. That's completely acceptable. That's what life's all about, um, you know, learning and adapting. But I think, you know, as people are exploring the, before they come to business school, thinking about their career, you know, now's the time to, to really start identifying some of that, that skill set that you have and the skill set you want to build and start identifying what career that may look like for you in the future. And then, you know, from there, we can, can work on it together. Great. Yeah, that's great yeah, that's advice. advice. It's great advice for everyone in in the different different industries that they want to go to after MBA. Yeah, okay. you asked, you know, you kind of mentioned like a few different industries and um, you know, it, recruiting looks different depending on the industry. So, you know, I could give you a general timeline, but I think, you know, then some of you'd be like, oh, but that, you know, that wouldn't work for me. So, you know, if you're going into investment banking, it's going to be very structured. There's going to be very set deadlines and it's going to be very specifically paced throughout that first two quarters of business school in the fall months. Um, and recruiting happens in a very specific manner. For things like entrepreneurship, or sometimes even fields like CPG and tech, those can vary widely depending on um, you know, the, the organizations that you're interested in or the specific roles. And so I think also kind of setting your expectations depending on what your areas of interest are to say, okay, some fields, you know, I may have classmates who are gonna be on this very rigid recruiting path and maybe I'm not, and that's completely acceptable too. Um, everybody's on their own journey to, to find you know, the, their next steps. And so kind of settle in, understand what that path may look like depending on your interest. And, and then you know, you're able to kind of best support your classmates around you and they're able to support you when you know, recruiting may be more intense for for one industry or another industry at different points in the year too. Yeah, that's great. Um, okay. So we have another one that's been asked quite a lot uh, in terms of the criteria that's um, offered for scholarships. Uh, what are the criteria for full-time MBA candidates? <laughs> I think funding your MBA is an important conversation to be having. So I you know, commend all of you for starting to think about that already. And I think about scholarship in context of that broader conversation around how do you intend to finance this degree? Because it's a major investment in yourself. It's an investment of time. It's an investment of money. Uh, and you want to make sure that that return on investment is coming your way. And so thinking about all the different uh, possibilities for how that may 
you know, transpire. And your scholarships are just one of, of several different funding sources that you may be, be utilizing to fund your degree. Um, the kind of other ones you may be thinking about would be loans. Um, so we have loans, loan opportunities, both for domestic U.S. students, and then we have several very strong partnerships for our international students to, to utilize, where Darden acts as a co-signer. So no, no outside co-signer needed, which is a really amazing opportunity. So we have loans, we have scholarships, um, personal savings. You may have other sponsorship opportunities um, from, from a company or from the military. Uh, so there are a variety of sources of, of funding. And realistically, most people may be utilizing more than one of those. So you know, as we enter a conversation about scholarship, just to keep in mind that it, it's one of many and probably wouldn't be the only source of funding that, that someone may be utilizing to attend business school. Scholarship at Darden in particular um, is it is something we think is very important. We want to provide opportunities for an affordable education for us, for our students. And so most of our scholarship is merit-based in nature, meaning that while the admissions process is holistic, we take many components into mind, the, the scope of a scholarship consideration is a little bit more narrow. Um, for a full idea of our scholarship offerings, I'll ask Catherine to, to drop a link into the chat box for you there that shows the full portfolio of all the scholarships we have. Some of them are very specific. So, you know, if you have a specific professional background or um, personal identity that may match with one of our scholarships, you know, check those out, see what those opportunities may be. We also have ones that are more um, general and and merit based in nature. So around things like your, your past academic performance or professional growth. So all of that is taken into consideration. For the majority of our scholarships at Darden, there's no additional um, steps needed. So your application alone serves as consideration for your um, scholarship consideration too. There's a few exceptions though. So take a look at that for full portfolio. And specifically, we have scholarships around entrepreneurship, innovation, and technology through our Batten Institute um, that requires one additional essay, um, which is actually provided as a part of the application too. So if that's something of interest, you take note of that as you're filling out your application. But for the majority, we're going to automatically be able to consider you based on the information we've gathered through your application. So know that's available. Um, and then we, I, one area that I failed to mention earlier, but we actually have a need-based aid program now at Darden. It's called Access Darden. So for those who, who may meet the criteria for need-based aid, we do provide um, small small um, scholarships specifically for those students. So again, that's something that is considered um, alongside you know, throughout the admissions process. So post admission, those who are interested in Access Darden may provide additional information to our financial aid team who will consider um, you know, for, for our Access Darden funds as well. So that's something we were really proud of and really excited to begin offering two years ago now. We're entering our third season of, of Access Darden. So take a look at that material online if you think that that may be something that you qualify for as well. So hopefully that kind of gives you an idea of kind of the scope of funding available and, and things to be considering because I think it is really important to you know, have conversations now, think about funding now so that when the time comes, that post-admission excitement you're also kind of ready to, to start thinking about, okay, now, you know, how am I going to put this into action? What, the, what is this going to look like in reality uh, in order to, to attend this program that I'm so excited about? Yeah, and, and you guys, if you need more information, Catherine posted the link uh, for any information on um, financial aid. So you can go check that out as well. Uh, we have two more questions. Um, we can actually take in two more questions. Uh, is there any difference between uh, round one, round two, or any other round in terms of acceptance rate? Great question. So Darden has four rounds of admission. We have an early action round in September, round one in October, round two in January, and round three in April. There are some slight differences to that, those rounds. So in our early action round in September, it's an, it's an opportunity for an open interview. And so for those who apply by that deadline, they can schedule their own interview with our, with our Darden team, which is you know, a nice opportunity. The rest of our rounds are interviewed by invitation only. So that's one of the perks of applying a little bit early to the program. Um, and then in terms of round one, 
one versus round two, or just you know, generally round versus round. You know, my best advice is to apply in the earliest round when your application is ready. So um, if you're not ready by September, that's okay. Just, you know, apply in October. If you're not ready by October, that's okay. Apply in, in January. But I would encourage you to apply as, as early as possible. You know, think about it. If, if we've got, let's say, you know, the Darden class is an empty auditorium. We've got 345 seats in that auditorium. After early action, we filled up a few rows of that of that auditorium. After round one, we filled up more of that auditorium. And so, you know, each progressive round, the class is is more full. And and so we it's you know by that nature, it's going to be more competitive for the remaining seats in the in the auditorium. So that doesn't mean that there aren't plenty of seats available and that you're not gonna get one of them. It just means that there's fewer in total than there were you know, back when the auditorium was completely empty. So hopefully that illustration kind of explains you know, maybe some of the advantages of, of considering applying a little bit earlier in the season as well. Okay, thank you for that clarification. I a lot of people, people are asking about that one. Um, Okay, we have five minutes left. Uh, one more question before we wrap up. Um, what is some general advice that can be offered to re-applicants? Wonderful. So we have many of people who, who do choose to reapply to Darden after um, previously applying and, and maybe not getting the answer that they hoped for. And we welcome that and think that there is a lot of opportunity for, for reapplicants to have a successful you know, second application. So we see it happen every single year. I think it's really important if you are a reapplicant to spend some time reflecting on maybe areas for growth and improvement from your previous application. What, what are things you can do to, to increase your, your opportunities for, um, for admission in the future? Maybe it is applying in an earlier round. Maybe it's as simple as that, that you know, by round three, things were just you know, too competitive. Um, or maybe it is you know, something like a standardized test score. I think that can always you know, make people cringe a little bit, but you know, it's, it's an indication that, that you're taking the process seriously. If you continue to um, improve your candidacy in a variety of ways, test scores may be one of them. Or maybe it's you know, providing further clarification of your, your goals and your, your reasons for coming to a program. So you know, that's gonna be individual to the applicant and something that I really encourage you as a reapplicant to spend some time being objective about your candidacy. Think about what it is that, that makes you a strong candidate and what may be some of the, shor the shortcomings may be. There's no perfect application. I'll tell you that right now. There's never been, there never will be a perfect business school applicant. Everybody's got strengths and everybody's got areas for growth. That's part of why you're coming to school. So keep that in mind as a reapplicant that um, you, you know, you're never going to have this perfect application or this perfect answer, but what are things you can do to, to show that you're continuing to um, improve your skills, improve your contributions to the Darden community. So um, spend some time thinking about that. We've got a great podcast on being a reapplicant. We also will have a webinar coming up in early August specific to reapplicants. So if that's a population that, that you fall in, I hope you'll you know, tune in to some of those additional resources because we'll spend, you know, a longer period of time digging into some of the specifics there. But know that it's uh, a population that we welcome and encourage to come back and reapply to Darden. And we see people reapply successfully every single season. So we hope that is, is you as well. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, okay, I'm about to wrap up. We have a few minutes left. Um, first of all, I want to say thank you to everyone for all of your questions. You keep them coming in. Um, if we have not answered your questions, there is a Zoom se session um, at 10 a.m. Pacific time uh, with Darden. And um, thank you so much again for keeping this engaging with all your questions. And um, thank you to Katie and thank you to Catherine for, you know, uh, answering all those questions in the chat box. It's, it's a lot. Uh, a lot of them are very specific also. So thank you so much both for your time and for your patience and for your all, all the good advice and insights. And um, for a close, um, Katie, do you have any last advice or tips for candidates? Well, Jim, thanks so much for having me. This has been fun and I appreciate all the, the questions that, that you all provided. It makes these sessions so much more engaging. So I appreciate you being here. And, and like Jim mentioned this afternoon, uh, 
the executive director of admissions, Donna Clark, will be available in the Zoom session. So we hope you'll come back and to continue the conversation there with her. We look forward to continuing to get to know you. And we hope that you'll join us at one of our upcoming coffee chats, workshops, or other events that Darden is hosting here in, in the coming days, weeks, months to come. And I think, you know, uh, for parting advice and, and uh, words of encouragement, you know, know that this is such an exciting chapter and, you know, the beginning of of new opportunities for you and your professional life and, and personal life too, as you think to attend business school and all that may um, you know happen from there. So you know, enjoy this process. Do as much research as you can to really understand what the environment's going to be like in different programs, what the learning opportunities are, so that you are going to make the most informed choice that's going to be the best one for you. And um, we look forward to sharing more about Darden as you continue. To, to do that exploration too. So thanks for joining us today and look forward to continue to engage with you in the future. Thank you, thank you, Katie. Thank you, everyone. And up next, we have Macomb School of Business. So uh, go ahead and jump on that as well. Thank you, guys. <laughs>